I don't think I've ever been more excited to make a video about Cinema 4D than I am about this one and snapping. And I've already made a few different videos about snapping and I've always been very disappointed with Cinema 4D's snapping tools and that's really about to change with what I'm about to show you. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, now full disclosure, I did not come up with these techniques and tools myself, so I definitely want to give credit to um, the videos I found online that showed this. Uh, so this first one's gonna be axis constraint snapping. Um, and I'll put a link below, definitely recommend watching it very straight and to the point. Um, and I'll probably even be starting with uh, an example very similar to that. Uh, this video about object snapping I watched as well, showing this um, snap move tool. Now the problem with this is this tool actually isn't in Cinema 4D. You have to do some work using the ST, uh, SDK to get it in there. And so that's where I had to watch this, this video to help me um, get that going. So if anybody else uh, knows how to do this, it should be possible to um, extract uh, just the tool and distribute it using the app Apache License 2.0 um, out of Visual Studio. It's just well beyond me, unfortunately. But let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this. All right, so let's get to it. If you haven't used Cinema 4D's snaps before or, or snap tool, I would highly encourage you to watch one of my other videos about it just to kind of get up to speed because this is gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, I am gonna come up here to my snap settings and I do recommend having point turned on, edge, um, edge really for midpoint. Midpoint is important here um, for what we're gonna be doing, but I'll, I'll also show you kind of uh, some workarounds for that. Um, now, I also wanna point out we can only do this on a single axis at a time. We can't kind of use the, the corner parts of the gizmo here to do two. Essentially, what we're gonna do is control, right click on um, an axis, and you're gonna see that um, part of the gizmo, that handle starts to move and then snap. And this is going to be where we start our movement from. So having midpoint is really important since that's what we're, we're snapping to. Edge probably would have worked too, um, but midpoint um, is also very helpful. Once I decide where I want that snap to start, start from, I can then click and drag and decide what I want to snap to. Okay, it can be a point because I turned those on. It could be a midpoint because I turned those on. It can even be a different object. And so this is very, very close to the exact type of snapping I would like to see. It's maybe not quite as straightforward as I would like, but it's definitely um, much better than what I was doing before. Now, what you can do in conjunction with this is work with your modeling axis. So if you didn't want to work with midpoints and you just wanted to work with points, right? Um, you could come in here, uncheck edge, which does deactivate midpoint, say, oh, cool, I want this to be on the, um, on this point. Can then do this again where I control, right click, decide where I want this to snap from right there, okay? And then click and drag, and you can see I'm able to snap this to whatever I like, okay? I'm gonna show another example of this or where this could be useful. So. Um, as I control right click on this, I've kind of always started snapping right here, all right? Well, I can't actually do that now because midpoint isn't turned on. So let's fix that. Let's turn that back on uh, because, so edge, midpoint, perfect. Because if I control right click again, remember, I can start snapping from any point along this axis that I can snap to. So if I click and drag from here, you can see it's that spacing, okay? So it's starting with, you know, that amount of spacing and snapping from there. So that can also be very helpful. Now, what the other video didn't show is how you can work with this um, in model mode. So not point mode, edge mode, polygon mode, but just with the whole object, okay? I should also point out that I also turned on polygon here because it gives us more to snap to, okay? But it's the same process. Control right click on an axis, find something you wanna snap to where you want that movement to start from, in this case, this edge, which is the very top. Click and drag, and I can now choose either the point, I could choose the polygon um, here to snap to, whatever, right? But very quickly, very easily, I've now um, lined these two cubes up, and if I wanted to move them even closer together, kind of the same thing. Control right click on the X, choose where I wanna start from. It'd be great if I could choose a point off to the side here, but I can't, click and drag, choose a point, midpoint, whatever it seems to know, that's what I wanna do, and there we go. So that's how we can work 
with whole objects. All right, now this last tool called the Snap Example Tool, uh, if you can believe that, is not actually in Cinema 4D by default. Uh, you have to kind of do some work with the SDK, export some plugins from that in order to get it added. And you'll see there's a whole list of some really cool things that I'll probably dive into um, in other videos because uh, some of them look really interesting, like the Sculpt Deformer, um, you know, and whatnot, Heart Shape. Uh, generator, um, who knows? But uh, what I want to show you is the snap example tool. And just to show you, I'm not making this up. If, if I come into my command manager and type in snap example tool, you'll see it there. And remember, you won't see this unless you download the STK, open it in Visual Studio and kind of build the project, export those plugins before um, you know, adding them into Cinema 4D. And if anybody's smart enough to know how to just get this tool out of those plugins, out of that SDK and into its own thing, um, please let me know, please reach out to me because I do think it is something that can be distributed on its own. And so I think that would be a great way to, to hopefully get Maxon um, to incorporate this into a future um, you know, build of Cinema 4D. This tool is amazing. Uh, I did add it to my user interface just to show you that you can. You can also create a shortcut for it. Um, I would probably, you know, come up with a different icon, uh, but let's see what we can do with this. So if I click on it to use it, essentially I can snap from anything I've turned on here from one object to the next object. Now it won't work in point mode, edge mode, polygon mode. Um, so it has to be the whole object, but look how precise you can be with this and how quick and straightforward this is. This is incredible. I wish I would have known about this a long time ago. I wish this was actually in Cinema 4D. Absolutely no reason for it not to be. And definitely something I'm going to be adding in here so I can use it um, more often and, and try and get more precise in my workflow. Because that's something I got away from when I started working in Cinema 4D more coming from 3D Studio Max is um, Cinema 4D just didn't seem like it had the tools to work as precisely as I was used to. Turns out it did have a lot of those tools. They're just not as straightforward um, or just essentially hidden um, from uh, people who would want to do that. So really don't understand the reasoning why, but I am glad that I found it. Um, and like I said, if anybody wants to help me figure out how to kind of get this out of the SDK and on its own so that, um, you know, I can share it, um, please let me know. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave a comment down below. If you could also like this video and subscribe to my channel, if you found it helpful, I would really appreciate that too. And until next time, take care.